Thank you very much to be here. I think always that I'm in Sweden, I'm really happy. And we do have a very long-standing relationship with many Swedish organizations, mainly with uh, Fremtidsjuden, almost 30 years, and Swedish Society of Nature Conservancy. And it's not just a matter of the general financial support. It's about sharing the same dream. So I'm really glad to be here. And I'm here to speak. I, I know that the theme, it's very ambitious. How to produce food, protect the environment, and generate income for farmers. But anyway, let's... Uh, food production, environmental protection, and income generation for food farmers is one of our great dilemma. I think this was already said, it was already, already mentioned. I don't need to go over this. And as my introductory remark, is everyone familiar with the international assessment of agriculture, knowledge, science, and technology for de development? Is everyone familiar? Okay. So, this, and I, I, I will build my presentation upon two main findings of this study. One is that food and nutrition security, uh, sustainable agriculture, and poverty reduction cannot be achieved by a business as usual approach. And the second one is that uh, the chains of food production and consumption have to ensure environmental protection. This entails the need to ensure that the process does not result in land abandonment, deforestation, or the placement of smallholder farmers into marginal land. And let's try to, 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 to give some examples from Brazil. What is not business as usual? Concrete examples from Brazil. And what's very fortunate is that in the last two years, uh, was uh, I, my organization, Centro Ecologico, we did a study in the whole country by the ministry, sponsored by the Ministry of Environment. We did an assessment of alternative systems that can both promote environmental, simultaneously promote environmental services, food production, and income for farmers. So I visited many uh, land use systems, alternative land use systems across the country, basically in the, in the Atlantic forest region, but also in the Amazon region. So that's what I'm going to speak about. Business as usual. In Pernambuco, northeast state of the country, sugarcane production, ethanol. Ethanol is one of the main commodities of the country, one of the exporting commodities of the country. I don't, I don't need to speak too much about this. This is how land is prepared for sugarcane production. So you can see here the, the huge areas of sugarcane production, and you can see the quality of the area. And uh, this region here was once called Zona da Mata, forest zone, and we don't have forests anymore. In this picture, you can see two kids. This is a rural settlement. Two kids extracting sand from the river to sell to the construction, the construction fever in the country, because they cannot live uh, they cannot make their living farming, even though they are in a rural settlement. However, in the, the same rural settlement, we have this agroforestry system. Uh, a family producing food, producing environmental service, producing full wood, and even with time to produce flowers. I visit this farm. This is from Erivan. And this is the landscape, perhaps, if we would have, if we had more um, systems like this, we would not have this area covered by sugarcane. Some figures. It is the name of the guide, name of the fund. Complex agroforest systems, coconut, fruits, and timber. Carbon sequestration, 170 tons of CO2 equivalent per hectare in a period of 10 years. So environmental service. Biodiversity, 2.3 channel weaver, it's an index to measure biodiversity. And it's a medium compared to a forest, but if you compare to a sugarcane plot, it's very high. And observation of wild animals and birds in the systems, and water production as well. Second example, this is also in Pernambuco, northeast part of the country. Jones, Abreu Lima, Pernambuco. If you can see here, there's a, a red line here. And looking from above, you look a lot of, it looks like a bunch of trees. But in fact, this is a very productive system. And if you look even 
More above, you are going to see here a mangrove. This is for you, Frederick. And I just learned that this is a mobile link with a very important role to protect the mangrove. Look, the mangrove has been encroached by urban expansion, but if we had more system like this, we would have more protection of the mangrove. Environmental services. Complex agroforest system, fruits and timber. Three tons of food per hectare per year, per year plus full wood without external input. So we repeat, three, uh, 13 tons of food per hectare per year plus full food wood without external input. This system is not based on external inputs. It's based on intellectual inputs in knowledge. I measure all these things, by the way. Carbon sequestration, 330 tons of CO2 equivalent per hectare in a period of 16 years. Biodiversity, 2.8 Shannon Weaver Index, medium, 75 different species of vascular plant in an hectare. Observation of wild animals and birds, typically from the mangrove. So a role, playing a role in the preservation of the mangrove. Third example, semi-arid region, Kachinga Biom, one of the poorest regions of the country. We have an area of almost two size, two, uh, double the size of Sweden, 22 million people uh, living in this biome, the poorest Brazilian region. Vilma and his family producing food, a lot of food. This is typically the vegetation of the Kachinga, a very dry region. Complex agroforest system, fruits, grains, and forage for livestock. Carbon sequestration, 67 tons of CO2 equivalent per hectare in a period of 10 years. Biodiversity, 2.8 Shannon Weaver Index. Observation of wild animals and birds as well. Another example, business as usual in the Amazon region. Deforestation, this is in the, the, the region called Deforestation Arch. And uh, we have this sort of a vicious circle. Extraction, illegal extraction of timber, cattle ranching, and soil bean production. By the way, cattle and soil bean, again, the main Brazilian export commodity. So they burn the, 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 the vegetation. And Brazil, it's in, in Brazil, 70% of the greenhouse gases emissions are related with uh, deforestation. Land use change, which is an euphemism to deforestation. Cattle production. So this is a correlation between deforestation and cattle production. So you see a positive correlation. More cattle, more deforestation. This is pretty clear. So in the same region, we have these agroforest systems. Coffee, Brazilian nuts, uh, cocoa, etc., etc., etc. So this guy, Luizão, is now he's teaching another farmer. This was during the, the, the one of the meetings. This was a project with a grant from GEF and uh, run by United Nations Development Program. And I also did an assessment for his farm. Complex agroforest system, fruits, coffee, cocoa, timber, Brazil nut. Carbon sequestration through three and a half, three and, and, uh, three five zero tons of CO2 equivalent in a period of 10 years. Biodiversity, 54 species of vascular plants in the whole system. Protein production, 173 kg per hectare in agroforest system compared with 66 in a pasture, cattle production. So the system is much more productive in terms of food production. Also, income, 23,000. Uh, per year in 20 hectares for managed area, which much higher than the, the, the common use pasture for cattle ranching. And finally, in the region that I've been working, business as usual, in Rio Grande do Sul, banana production. This is after a, we are in a region of steep areas where they produce banana. This was a, after a rain, uh, a tr uh, uh, summer rain. So we have this erosion. 
Intensive use of pesticide chemical inputs. And in 2004, we had a hurricane. We're uh, talking to farm, they start, they start to mention that we have much more this sort of uh, extreme uh, climate event. And in 2004, we had this hurricane called Catarina. Almost 5,000 families from night to day lost their source of income. Their banana plantation was completely destroyed. However, farmers working in the same region, farmers working with agroforest systems, the system resisted to the strong winds of the hurricane. Resilient system. I promise my, where is cutting? I promise myself not to speak about acai, but it's stronger than me. This is one of the, is one, it's one of the crops that they are mixing with banana plantations called acai, which is a, a, a crucial palm to preserve the Atlantic forest. So farmers now are planting this tree, processing, so the role of the women, the role of the youth, create job opportunities. So this is the product. Then they market local market, regional market. And this is my second best uh, subject that I like to talk. In, in, in Brazil right now, we have a public policy that at least 30% of the budget to buy food to schools should be used to, must be used at least 30% of the total budget to buy food from smallholders. So what, it, what farmers uh, have been doing is to produce food and to be, and, and to sell it to local schools, local and regional schools. And we also use this uh, work, the environmental work to do some environmental material to work with the schools. And then, as many of these schools are in rural areas, they also work with farmers to um, educate farmers to make this sort of system. And then we close this, what we call virtual circle of production and consumption. Thank you. Amazing. Thank, thank you, Andre. Uh, May I go? Thanks for talking about mobile links, stay for a while, and uh, thanks for talking about coffee. I mean, we're heading closer to the coffee break, and I know that the Swedish people, they really need coffee, so. And hopefully they will buy coffee from these kind of agroforestry systems in the future. And you're so convincing, so one keeps wondering, why is business as usual still so usual? What do we need to change, except these 30% of, uh, food that is in schools that it has to be bought from uh, local smallholders. What else? You asking me? If yeah. I have the, no, I don't have the answer. You don't. It's, it, it, yeah, yeah I, I'm honest. It's something that I, I, it's it's difficult for me to 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 understand. This is a very complex uh, answer, and I, I don't believe that we we have a single answer to this question. But it's, it's the the advantage. It's too good to be true, and it's true. I did this whole assessment, I traveled the whole country, I've been doing this for many years, and I see a lot of farmers improving their lives, having more income, protecting nature. So it's something that as, as more I, I study, less I understand why it's not so widely adopted. So perhaps <laughs> something that we can discuss here, but it's... So let's get back to that during the panel discussion and find out the solution and get the incentives right. Too, so. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So now it's time for...